Bada bing, bada boom. Geeks are back, baby. We got the picks, the predictions. It is the main card scoop. It's Armin Sarukian, and he is facing Matsyas Gamrat, and it's going to be a banger going down at the apex. Let's get after it from the bottom to the top. Main card picks and selections. First fight of the main card, Chris Curtis coming out against Rodolfo Vieira. Rodolfo Vieira is 8-1. Chris Curtis, 28 and 8. Every time I see say Rodolfo Vieira 8 and 1, it makes me laugh on the inside because we all know who it was. It was Fluffy for Hernandez. His gas tank deflated. Um, that's just gonna be something that sits in the back of everyone's heads for every single time. Um, this guy comes into the octagon. Chris Curtis on their hand, what a role this guy's on. He's he's steamrolling through, he's getting knockouts, he's he's got valid W's. And um, I think this one just plays right into the part, man. I think Chris Curtis, so much momentum. He trusts his hands. He's so experienced. I think that he can stay out of a submission early in this fight. Um, the longer it goes, Vieira is just going to, you know, slowly deflate. Uh, he's a very, very muscle-built guy. And, you know, that just doesn't work well with gas tanks. Uh, I think Chris Curtis is just going to be able to, you know, withstand whatever grappling entourage comes in the beginning and um, play with him on the feet until eventually wearing him out. Give me Chris Curtis. I think a round three dabble is a spectacular spot in this fight. I think uh, Chris Curtis gets it done at a dog price too. Maybe. I think the line's closed. Either way, give me Chris Curtis. Goosey, what do you got? I really like Curtis in this one. I think he's got much more MMA experience. He'll a lot of his strengths are going to be able to stop Rodolfo Vieira from really getting his game plan going, which is get him to the ground and uh, try and strangle him. And I think that Chris Curtis is able to evade takedown. He has good takedown defense, and he really likes that grinded out style of getting the opponent tired, really putting damage and then putting him away. And I think he's going to be able to keep that going in this one. So give me Chris Curtis by knockout. Let's go. Dano. Yeah. I like Chris Curtis by knockout too. I think you look at every one of the air's fights and they're all sub, 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 sub. And uh, the longer the fights go, the worse the, Vieira gets right we saw him gas out against Fluffy like you said and even his last fight against Stoltzfus was a third round submission but he was dog tired luckily Stoltzfus was just more tired than he was so uh, looking at Curtis he's got seven strikes per landed per minute so I feel like if it stays on the feet um, he's just going to be piecing up Vieira and he hits like a damn truck so he could put uh, Vieira out he's also Chris Curtis stuffed all three of Brendan Allen's takedowns and all three of Phil Hawes' takedowns in their fight. So, you know, he's he's going to be game with the takedown stuffing. So as long as he can do that, throw some elbows, throw some uh, clean left hooks, left uh, right shots right down the pipe. I like Curtis. So let's do it. Facts. Fishman, what you got? Yeah, I'm running with Chris Curtis, um, the action man. Um, he's at uh, Extreme Couture, I believe. And since 2021, he is 6-0 and oh with – five KOs. So this matchup is going to be your ground guy versus striker. And I think Chris Curtis is going to come out victorious in this one. Brendan Allen, Phil Hawes, two fire wins under the belt. And I mean, this dude, he's got uh, out of his 30 wins, 15 of them or 28 wins rounded off of 30. He, um, 15 knockouts. So this dude hits hard and I think he's going to find the chin. Um, kind of like uh, whatever fight I said earlier, I think uh, with JP buys, I think the only way that Vera is going to win is going to be the ground. And um, like you said, stuff in the takedown from Hawes and Allen. Uh, I think he's in the, I think he's in a safe zone here and let his hands fly. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Let's move into the uh, next boot. We got a big prospect matchup coming out. We got uh, Nate Maness, 14 and one. Bantamweight coming out against uh, Umar Nurmagomedov, uh, 14 and 0. This is going to be a scrap and a half. As uh, 
obviously he is a Nurmagomedov. So a lot of, you know, hype on this guy. He is that kind of hype though. I mean, he's got very good W's. He's a very put together uh, grappler. Um, he's striking has come a long way. Uh, the guy's just overall just a spectacle, honestly. And it's just a matter of time. People are already saying future champion, whatnot, whatnot. Nate Maness, on the other hand, 14 and one. I mean, he's kind of getting looked over uh, a lot in this matchup. Um, you know, is it rightly so? Maybe, you know, Umar could just come out and just show clear gaps of skill level. But um, I think Nate Maness is a dog, though. I mean, I'm not going to pick him in this spot, but I do think that like a Nate Maness knockout for like a barely a, un- a quarter of a unit or some kind of thing like that isn't like a far, like far tail. Like the guy's 14 and one. He's already showed he can come back from adversity. He got saved by the bell against Tony Gravely, but he's a huge pressure wrestler that has heavy hands. So, I mean, just the fact that he can battle back and still have knockout power in the second round, that shows you something. I mean, he's going to be a live dog, but definitely not anything you want to put too much risk on. I'm not touching Umar. It's just a little too steep for me. Uh, What do you got, Goosey? Yeah, Umar's a big favorite in this one, and I think rightfully so. A lot of his strengths are areas of weakness for Nate Maness. I think uh, he's shown a vulnerability to leg kick or uh, the body kicks, leg kicks, and Umar really throws really throws good kicks. I would say his kicks are even better than his hands right now, but I anticipate he's been working on the whole game. His hands are going to be better and better as he keeps going, and I mean – I got him pretty comfortably in this one. I don't know if he gets a finish, but either way, he's going to look good. Facts. Fishman? Yeah, I'm, if you go with Umar, you'd probably just have to go with a sub. I had him at minus 900. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I think Umar's going to win this dude. Like Goose said, his kicks are sick. Uh, his debut, he was throwing some wild kicks. And, um. But yeah, Nate Maness, five knockouts, three subs. Uh, got a win over. I don't know if these are in a row, but t- knockout over Tony Gravely, a sub over Luke Sanders. So he's on a four-win streak with three finishes, and it's gonna be a good fight. You could dabble on Nate, like uh, CEO said, but I think Umar's gonna win. He's he's that dude. Um, but yeah, she got Dano. Uh, I'm riding with Nurmagomedov, and just what sticks out to me, he's got averages more strikes per minute than Maness at 3.6 compared to 2.8, and then uh, he has way more takedowns per minute, which is 7.5 compared to 1.5, so I feel like he's just going to be too much for Maness. I could see Maness holding on. He's a tough dude. Like you said, he's got some momentum behind him for a win streak, but uh, I feel like Nurmagomedov is just another step in his in his path. This will be a good test for him, but I feel like he's going to be able to uh, handle himself pretty well. Yeah, 100p. We're moving right into the next boot. It's Thiago Moises, 15-6, and six, versus Christos Giagos, 19-9. and nine. This is a lightweight matchup. Uh, I'm pretty interested to see how this scrap goes down. I mean, Thiago Moises definitely in kind of need of a W. Christos Giagos just seems like he's lost to – just about everybody that's got a little bit of pop in the division, um, but just keeps winning those couple of fights to hang in there. Uh, this guy is a stallion. I mean, I feel like he just never says no. I feel like this guy signs the line like a warrior. He comes here to fight. Uh, you can only respect him for it. We did see Tiago Moises go down to, I believe it was Joel Alvarez. Um, that was an absolute shocker. I mean, I think that was his debut. Um, no one really saw that coming. He kind of, you know, came like a bat out of hell and beat the shit out of Tiago Moises in that matchup. I do not think Christos Giagos is that kind of guy. I think Tiago Moises gets this fight to the mat if he needs to, dictates that submission game, really finds his way to the neck, maybe gets some kind of, you know, arm bar or something. I think Moises is just going to have the upper hand on the ground. And I think that's where he takes his fight after a beat down last fight. He's going to want to go in there, take as least less damage as possible and get out. So give me Moises submission <clears throat> sprinkle goosey. We got. 
how I how I see this fight is Tiago Moises is at the bottom of the upper tier and Christos Giagos is at the top of the lower tier and Moises is still just a level above him where they're going to be similar skill sets they both are pretty comfortable on the ground they they like to box but I just think Tiago Moises is better anywhere this goes. Um, and his cardio is going to be there. He's fought, he's fought into the, the fourth round before. He, he did get tired, but he finished three rounds strong, I think. In the three-round fight, he definitely gets it done. So give me Tiago Moises. 100P. Fishman, what you got? I was going to ride with Tiago, but – um, I'm, I have a feeling about Christos right now. I don't know what it is, but um, I mean, his last fight out, he, he fought Armand. So, I mean, main main event of this card, very good guy. Um, but, I mean, plus 200, and Tiago is at minus 240, I believe I saw. But, I mean, Tiago, ATT guy, he has beaten – he's on a 2L streak, Joel and Islam, but Islam – is Islam and he got caught with Alvarez, but he's beaten Alex Hernandez, Bobby Green, Michael Johnson. So I mean, this guy is caliber, but I think Christos is going to get the job done. Seven knockouts under the belt. Um, he has a ton of XP, and he's fought caliber dudes as well. I mean, I'm going to ride with with Diagos on this. Christos Diagos plus two hundred. Let's go, Dano. I don't know too much about these guys, but I'm just going to ride with Moises. And I see his last two fights with the – he got put away twice. You don't love to see it, but, I mean, he's been – looks like he's been terrible up until then. And uh, – but like you guys have said, he's just fought dudes. And Diagos, who's been put away multiple times, I just feel like younger guy, Moises, I think he's 27, needs a win, um, needs to get some respect back on his name. It's going to be a big fight for him. And I'm just going to trust – Trust in Diego Moises. All right. Trust, trust, trust. Let's move into the next boot. We got a heavyweight scrap rooney at even money line. We got Josh Parishian versus Alan Boudot. I like Alan Boudot. I think that in this matchup, they come out, they bounce around, they play that big old fat boy heavyweight patter smacker bullshit that we see, you know, every time so often. And I think that Alan Bodeau sneaks the snake, the snaky split decision that we all know. I think this fight is literally just that sloppy back and forth. But we all enjoy it. I think it'll be a good sloppy back and forth. And I think Alan Boudot comes out on top with a little bit more reach and a little bit more touch, a little bit more numbers on the scorecards at the end of the night. Give me Alan Boudot by split decision. Let's go front kick fish. Yeah, I mean. I don't have too much on this, um, but Josh, we got one and two in the UFC, 10 knockouts. Uh, I think he's been put away twice. And Allen has seven knockouts, been put away twice. So, I mean, kind of a toss up for me. Um, in 2021, Josh was one and one. And Allen is 0 2 and one no contest. So, I mean, not much for me to judge off of, but. Shit, flip a coin, and that's my pick. But the Allen's got beat by Parker Porter, Tom Aspinall. But I mean, I don't know. That's just like an awkward mix of people. You got <laughs> Parker Porter and then Tom Aspinall. So I mean, I don't know. I'm just really kind of stumped on this one. Fuck it. I'm going to just go with Josh. Got more knockouts. All right, Goosey. Um, I'm going to pick Alan Budo. I think. He's a more athletic figure in there. It's probably going to be a striking matchup. And, yeah, you know, he's in shape. He's got pretty good cardio, and he's athletic. Um, I'm going to need to see a good performance from Parisi in after uh, – before I can pick him again after watching him get face humped last time out too. So <laughs> I'm going Budo. Yeah. Dano, what do you got? I'm going to ride with uh, Boudot as well. 
I, I like that he's training with Don. You know, we talked about training partners in the past with Mario Batista down on the card. Don's got to wear off on him somehow, I believe. Um, he's desperately looking for a win, Bedo. He has he's got the short end of the stick. He kind of debuted against Aspinall. Um, he did lose to Park Reporter, but I, I want to say they set a record in that fight for like most strikes. So that definitely like plays into your pitter patter game. Uh, Parisian, he does have knockouts, but we haven't really seen him too much in the UFC, I believe. Um, Parisian was another contender series guy, won on the contender series, came in, lost. And uh, like Goose said, he fell victim to the most sus strikes in UFC <laughs> back on the Lewis. Doubt this card when he was getting teabagged. Um, so if Budo wants to, like, if Budo gets in trouble, he could take care of him on the ground. Like, he was getting held there on the ground by uh, Dante Mays. So I'm going to go with Budo. But yeah, give me Budo. All right. This I'm... is a low tier heavyweight fight. So. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. We'll see if we'll see if Parishian can bounce back from the most sus strikes of all time. All right, we're moving into the yeah. co-main event here. It is Neil Magny, twenty six and eight, the vet coming out against the future Shavkat Rachmanov. I can't tell you how high I am on this guy. This guy's good. <clears throat> I can't tell you. How high I am on this guy. This guy has got grappling. He's got striking. He's got the size. He's got the speed. He's got, I don't even honestly know too much about his tank because, you know, he just sparks dudes. So, I mean, I don't think he's going to need the tank in this one. I think Neil Magny straight up, the story is, for me, if Max Griffin is piecing you up, Shavka Rachmanov, is going to to really hurt you. And um, I, I just can't get that picture out of my head. I mean, like Max Griffin, like, yeah, I mean, you want to talk about him being like a striker? Like, dude, I mean, we are so, so far in the evolution of MMA. I mean, wait until Neil Magny sees the shop guy. He was asking for Hamzat. I think that he's going to be just as surprised when he gets his hands on the cut. I think that uh, Shavka inside the distance is a very, very good play. And I'm taking it. Make it 16 and 0 Shavka. What do you got, front kick? Shavka, baby. I mean, this dude's a fucking finisher, 100% finish rate. Uh, he's working out a Kaz top team and eight knockouts, eight subs. I mean, there's no way you can escape this guy. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, fuck. Yeah, Neil Magny riding out a split decision victory against Max Griffin and then calls out Hamzat. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think he's going to get the Shavkat and then maybe the Hamzat after it. So, but Shavkat comes first. Let's go 16 and 0. Let's go. And he was getting good looks at Sanford Jim, too. Dano, what you got? Uh, same as you guys. I just feel like. You know, my breakdown for this is Magny's really well-rounded, but um, I just feel like he won't be won't be enough. I feel like Shavkat's too good in too many different positions, feet, ground, against the fence, clinch. Like, I feel like he's a killer. I feel like he's a real deal. So it might be a little passing of the torch. On P. Goosey, what you got? I like Shavkat. It's going to be a sweep. I think he's going to be the alpha in there, the the guy really doing the hunting, you know, because he's more explosive, stronger, and probably better anywhere this fight goes. He just fought and handled a, a lengthy striker, pretty well a striker that's better than Neil Magny. And I think he goes in there and does what he wants. Uh, Shavka and Umar. It feels like a very safe play if you want to pair those two guys up. Uh, not the best value, but it really does limit it, and the juice is probably worth the squeeze on that one because those two guys are going to go in there and look pretty good. Um, so that that would be my comments on this, but I got Shavkat to win. Yeah. All right, let's move right into the main event, man. We got Armin Sarukian 
18 and 2 versus Mateus Gamrat, 20 and 1. His only loss is that one guy right there, Garam Kudaladze, who we just saw in a super close scrap to Demir lose last weekend. So this L kind of doesn't look as bad, but we did see his gas tank go. And we do see his gas tank go in fights. I'm speaking about Gamrot. He's getting disrespected a little bit on these lines coming out initially. I think they got him at a uh, plus 200 around-ish uh, underdog here. And they've got Sarukian, you know, minus like 260. So not a lot of respect here. But um, I'm not sure if the line's too far off. Because Armin Sarukian should be able to do some serious damage from top position. Um, I think getting this fight to the mat shouldn't be the hardest thing as Gamrot likes to shoot himself, but I think Saruki might just have that upper hand. I mean, get the sweep, some kind of thing like that. I mean, we all kind of bought the Joel hype train and Saruki and kind of derailed that very, very violently. I think that Gamrot, this fight either goes really, really well for him or really poorly for him. I think that he either wins this fight and shocks a lot of people and gets like a some kind of finish around the middle to beginning of the middle end of this fight beginning to middle of this fight he'll get a knockout or he'll get murdered through five rounds by Sarukian elbows ground and pound just vigorous so that's kind of my take on it and I think Sarukian will do that for the most part so uh let's let's go uh Dano off rip I'm going to ride with Sarukian. I, I think Gamrot's a nasty wrestler, and we kind of saw Garam get robbed this past weekend, maybe. You know, you, you have your opinions on that, but I feel like uh, uh, Gamrot got robbed by Garam, right? He took him down five times in their fight and outlanded Garam and still got the loss. I feel like if he's if Gamrot's going to have success against Sarukian, it's going to be on the ground, and I say that because – um, Sarukian did get out wrestled by Makachev, given it is Makachev, but he still got out wrestled. Gamrot has yet to be out wrestled um, that I've seen. So uh, if it stays on the feet, though, like you said, Sarukian just mauls people and he's just like a total savage. And this, I could definitely see this as one of those fights that they're both really good on the ground. So it could just cancel out and we see him up top. And if it stays up top, give me Sarukian. I feel like he's a dog. All right, yeah, facts. I think that his tank is going to be better through five rounds too. What do you got, Kusi? Yeah, this this might not be the most uh, name value main event, but we are in for a treat with this one. I think Gamera, he's a good fighter, especially early on. He does pay late, but he, he has very good skills, and the first two rounds he's game to go with anyone. Um, that being said – Armin Sarukian, I view him as an elite prospect, you know, like an A-level prospect that he's 25 years old. He's getting better each fight, and he's already at a point now where he could go uh, contend and do well in some big-name fights. Uh, so the fact that he's getting better and better, too, is is pretty easy how far he can go in this game because I mean Islam's fighting for the belt next if he wins Armin, Armin Sarukian could be a fight or two away from getting that rematch with how close they were uh in the last fight so I think his stand-up's better his wrestling is better and his cardio is better so in a five-round fight I think there's a lot of opportunities for Sarukian to get it done and look good doing it let's go Fishman I've been kind of back and forth on this one. Um, my brain is telling me to go with Gamrot because it's staring at me with a plus 210 value. But then I just remember that, like, it's arm on Sarukian. This guy is – this guy's a beast everywhere. And I don't – I mean, it's tough. It's tough. But I'm, I'm putting the faith in arm on Gamrot, ATT guy, I believe, former KSW champ. Both of these guys, uh, excuse me, Armand's been finished one time, but Gamma has never been finished. Both these guys are on crazy streaks, five win streaks with two knockouts for Armand, and 
a three win streak with uh three finishes, I believe, for Gamrot, two knockouts, one sub. So this fight is going to be great to watch. Um, but I'm going to put my faith in Armand on this one. Let's go. Those are the picks. Those are the predictions. Geeks are here every week giving you the scoops. Check the Twitter at Guillotine Geeks. We're really stepping our game up on there. And yeah. Oh, you should, you should put that in. Catch us at BKFC 26. Luis Palomino coming for that second strap. Motherfucker. Bandito. And Danny Sabatello. You're a good guy too. Bella Bella Tello. Tello. Ren and Ferreria. Cody Law. Let's go. Oh, 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 o